Okay, thanks so much, uh, Chairman uh, Oscar. Good afternoon, everybody. In the next uh, minute, uh, I have uh, to uh, talk about uh, winning uh, predictors, which is uh, an area where uh, there is not much uh, novelty in the last years. So uh, what uh, I'm going to do is uh, just to uh, emphasize what I think uh, it is important uh, regarding uh, this specific uh, process of care in our uh, intubated, uh, mechanically uh, ventilated patients. These are my conflicts of, uh, of interest. And uh, when we evaluate uh, patients under mechanical uh, ventilation, uh, we want uh, to uh, withdraw uh, assistance and we, go, uh, we want to withdraw it uh, as soon as possible because uh, as long as uh, this is prolonged unnecessarily, uh, this will uh, deteriorate the uh, outcomes and uh, even uh, will be accompanied by uh, an increase uh, in mortality as uh, we will see uh, later on. So uh, to uh, withdraw uh, the ventilator assistance, uh, the first thing that uh, we need to do is uh, just uh, to uh, have uh, some insight on the likelihood uh, of a particular patient to uh, breathe uh, without uh, the ventilator. For sure, we are not going to do this uh, with uh, a patient uh, no, uh, who is uh, deeply sedated and uh, curarized. We are not, not going to do this uh, with, uh, with a patient with a FAO2 of, I don't know, 80% and uh, PIP15. But uh, when uh, gas exchange uh, has uh, improved uh, sufficiently, uh, uh, respiratory mechanics uh, no, begin uh, also to improve. No, uh, the hemodynamic status uh, begins to be uh, controlled and uh, the neurological uh, status uh, is uh, sufficient uh, to uh, uh, keep uh, the uh, upper uh, airways uh, patent, uh, then uh, we have uh, to screen uh, these patients. And uh, for this, uh, we will use uh, predictors. And the best predictor that uh, we have uh, nowadays is the ratio of uh, respiratory rate over uh, tidal volume, and we will see uh, why. Uh, then, uh, regarding the winning process, uh, there is a second uh, step which is a confirmatory step and we need to, to be sure that the patient can sustain a spontaneous breathing uh, unassisted uh, for a certain uh, amount of time and uh, before deciding uh, extubation. And uh, this is uh, no, uh, conducted uh, usually with uh, ATPs, uh, sometimes with uh, low levels of uh, pressure support and we will see later also the differences between these. And uh, if uh, the patient uh, tolerates uh, this uh, challenge, uh, say it uh, that way, then we proceed with uh, extubation. So this is uh, the trajectory of mechanical ventilation from the beginning uh, to uh, the end. And as I told you before, I'm gonna focus in the first part uh, then uh, no, where it is important uh, to screen uh, the patients and to help us uh, in this uh, uh, step, uh, we uh, use uh, predictors. And uh, once uh, we have uh, a positive test, uh, we go to the winning trial with a duration of uh, maximum uh, a couple uh, of hours. And if everything is correct, uh, we excavate the patients. If the patients uh, fail someplace uh, here, no, because uh, no, the, the predictor uh, no, is uh, negative or the winning trial uh, is not tolerated uh, for the patient, then uh, no, we uh, reconnect uh, that uh, subject uh, to the ventilator and uh, we usually proceed with uh, a progressive uh, withdrawal of support until the uh, extubation is uh, accomplished uh, later on. This is the basis of the major screening tool in patients intubated and mechanically ventilated. And this is based on much research done by, by this group, not trying to understand the mechanisms of successful and unsuccessful trials of winning from mechanical ventilation. 
And uh, what uh, the authors uh, realized uh, here in this uh, study that was a small physiological study conducted, I think, in uh, only 15 or 17 patients, that uh, the patients uh, that were to have uh, an unsuccessful trial of winning, they immediately developed this altered breathing pattern. And this is reflected here by this uh, very rapid respiratory rate and this shallow, small tidal volume. So, uh, and this uh, breathing pattern was uh, the hallmark of the unsuccessful trials of uh, winning from mechanical ventilation. A rapid respiratory rate and a very small tidal volume that occurred immediately after the disconnection from the ventilator. Not many people uh, know uh, this uh, study by, uh, by the same group. And uh, this study, uh, no, it uh, simply applied uh, in the correct uh, methodological uh, way uh, the uh, physiopathologic uh, observations uh, published uh, no, some years, uh, no, some years before by the same group. And uh, here what uh, the authors uh, did uh, in a group of 100 uh, uh, medical patients, uh, they did uh, a prospective study in which uh, the clinicians were blinded uh, to the indexes uh, being studied and then uh, these uh, different indexes uh, were, uh, were developed uh, to, uh, to have uh, threshold values in a predictive uh, no, a sample uh, test and then the reliability of uh, these uh, indexes were applied in a prospective uh, validation data set. And uh, of the all indexes they studied, uh, the best of all, the best of all them was uh, the ratio of uh, the respiratory rate on over uh, tidal volume. And one, uh, we need uh, diagnostic uh, tests uh, when uh, we win or we want to win uh, patients from uh, mechanical ventilation. We want the screening, uh, screening tests because uh, no, uh, when uh, typically uh, we perform in screening, we are in front of a situation where the likelihood of uh, having uh, no, uh, an outcome, no, uh, in this case, uh, no, the winning success uh, is low. And you can see this, uh, no, uh, for instance, uh, with uh, mammographies in, uh, uh, in women. No, we perform uh, mammographies in a, a huge uh, a population and uh, we uh, need uh, a kind of test that is uh, easy to do and uh, is quick and uh, which is extremely uh, sensitive, has a very high uh, sensitivity in the, in the way that uh, a negative test, you know, for instance, a res a respiratory rate over tidal volume above this uh, threshold, uh, about uh, 100, or uh, a negative test, uh, if it's uh, a mammogram, this uh, rules out the diagnosis, discards the diagnosis, right? So this uh, no person uh, would not have, or the likelihood of having uh, breast cancer is very low, or the likelihood of uh, having a winning success is extremely low. No. So when the tests uh, are positive, we want to confirm the diagnosis and we want to be sure that uh, this patient can breathe uh, no, uh, spontaneously uh, and unassisted uh, uh, during, uh, no, during, a long, uh, during a long time. And uh, for this we need uh, a specific test, but the problem with the F over BT ratio is this is a, a highly sensitive test, but uh, is poorly specific. This means that patients with an F over BT ratio below uh, 100, there are still many patients that will not be able to sustain spontaneous breathing for a long while. And this is why we do confirm. Again, if you go to the example of mammography, if you have a positive mammogram, then you will go to a breast biopsy just to confirm your uh, diagnosis. And uh, when uh, we have uh, to perform uh, this screening and why this screening uh, is to be done uh, no, when uh, there is a, a low suspicion of, uh, of success. 
Here, there are uh, no, a number of studies that uh, have been conducted uh, with this uh, with this subject, and uh, down there you see the original study, in which uh, you see that uh, no, uh, the prevalence, the pretest probability of success, is uh, around 50 percent. So this is uh, just to uh, not to flip a coin. No, you are uh, rather uncertain about uh, what the patient uh, will do. And now uh, we will see why it uh, is uh, so important to uh, perform these tests, not this uh, screen test uh, when the prevalence uh, is low. And uh, here is still uh, no, uh, from, uh, from the same study. And uh, you can see here, for instance, uh, this is the original study with uh, a pretest uh, probability of success uh, of about 55%. And what happens after applying the F over BT ratio? The positive predictive uh, value, the post-test probability, increased uh, by 34%. Now, on the other side, if you go to very low probabilities of success, so the patient is very unlikely to be weaned, and you perform a screening test, an F over BT, and the F over BT is uh, below 100, then you will have uh, no, a post-test probability of success, which is double, is about uh, 40%. And uh, not the other extreme, where unfortunately the vast majority of studies have uh, been uh, analyzing the usefulness of this index. Uh, it clearly shows that uh, as high, uh, no, as long as the pretest probability increases, no, the likelihood of uh, this index of being, uh, of changing the post-test probability is very low. In other words, if you study this in normal subjects that are coming out from the operating room, this index is going to be useless because these subjects are very likely to breathe spontaneously without any, uh, without any problem. And why the confirmatory test? Because if you, you, if you only use the screening and the F over BT, and uh, you extubate rapidly, and this is what these authors uh, did. After two minutes uh, of uh, TPs, then what uh, you will have is a colossal amount of patients that will be reintubated. Why? Because these patients will uh, intolerate uh, the, uh, uh, the, the spontaneous breathing uh, unassisted for a, long, uh, for a long time. Another issue is uh, what about uh, the duration of the spontaneous breathing trial? No, uh, is it uh, going to be uh, short or uh, say about uh, 30 minutes as uh, the authors uh, did here or the conventional those days up to uh, two hours? And uh, in this study, uh, the authors uh, no, uh, showed that uh, either one of these approaches, uh, 30 minutes or uh, two hours, had uh, exactly the same outcomes. So the final conclusion of uh, the study was uh, that uh, no uh, 30 minutes uh, spontaneous breathing trial is uh, enough. This study, uh, however, uh, has uh, no, uh, some problems. And uh, for instance, uh, being uh, or in theory, uh, being the two groups uh, identical uh, at enrollment, no, the median time to fail in one group was only 15 minutes, and uh, in the other, it was uh, 30 uh, minutes. And uh, this is uh, not uh, not easy to understand. And uh, this is uh, data obtained in uh, our study from uh, our institution. And here, uh, what you can see is uh, not the time course of the tolerance uh, up uh, to uh, two hours uh, of uh, spontaneous breathing. And uh, you see here that uh, up to uh, one third of the patients uh, screened uh, failed after uh, 30 minutes. And this is the median uh, time to fail in uh, uh, this population, which was about uh, uh, 25, uh, 25 uh, minutes. Another relevant question is uh, how to perform the uh, spontaneous breathing trial or the winning trial. So this can be done with uh, simply by disconnecting the patient with the TPs and adding uh, some oxygen, or you can uh, use uh, low levels of uh, support, no, continue with uh, no, the ventilator without uh, disconnection, 
and using low levels of support. And overall here, what you see is that the, the successfully extubated patients and the reintubated patients uh, is more or less uh, identical when uh, you compare the two techniques. And uh, there is, uh, as expected, uh, a better uh, a better tolerance uh, in the same, <clears throat> a better tolerance of the uh, pressure support. Only 14% of patients uh, clinically failed uh, at two hours with the pressure support, whereas the percentage of uh, failures at two hours using the uh, TPs was uh, slightly but uh, significantly, uh, significantly higher. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we do know that uh, when uh, we uh, analyze uh, patients uh, no, uh, during uh, a spontaneous uh, breathing trial, not the uh, test that uh, best mimics uh, how the patient uh, will uh, behave uh, after extubation uh, in terms uh, of uh, muscle effort, in this case in terms of uh, work of breathing, is uh, the TPs. No? And, uh, in the, this study, what uh, you see uh, is that uh, no, the work of breathing uh, uh, performed uh, during uh, the beginning and uh, at the end of a successful winning trial is uh, exactly the same that the work uh, performed immediately after uh, extubation. So uh, TPs uh, really mimics uh, the post-extubation amount of effort that the patients uh, will do. And again, uh, this is especially relevant in patients difficult to win. And uh, here you see that uh, even with a small support, the uh, pressure support uh, of uh, seven centimeters of water uh, with no PEEP, uh, almost uh, half the patients uh, tolerated the technique. Whereas when these same very patients were breathing during TPs, none of them tolerated the spontaneous breathing without uh, any assistance. So you have to be careful when uh, you extubate uh, patients, even with uh, low levels of uh, assistance. This is uh, no, a recent uh, physiologic uh, meta-analysis uh, dealing with uh, exactly this issue and uh, showing uh, again uh, that uh, systematically either uh, low levels of CPAP or low levels of support, of pressure support, not consistently uh, decreases the, the work of breathing as compared to totally unassisted breathing. Okay, so uh, no, uh, again, I do insist uh, on this, uh, no, uh, the technique that best mimics uh, the amount of effort uh, before extubation and immediately after extubation is the TPs. Uh, what about uh, the, the screening uh, procedure and a screen as soon as possible during uh, uh, the course of uh, the disease. Well, uh, this uh, has been uh, no, uh, indirectly uh, analyzed uh, here in this uh, study by uh, Lelujan co-workers in uh, which uh, no, we compared the usual way uh, to win patients uh, with, uh, uh, from mechanical ventilation with uh, a computer-driven uh, system. This was the uh, SmartCare uh, system. And here uh, we included uh, patients uh, very early in the course uh, of the disease when a minimal set of uh, conditions uh, were achieved in terms of uh, gas exchange, uh, uh, mechanics, uh, neurological uh, status, and uh, the patients, uh, of course, were tolerating uh, pre-support. And then, you know, as I told you, uh, it was a comparison because the usual way of uh, conducting winning and a machine that uh, systematically uh, analyzes uh, breathing pattern and also CO2, but mainly is an analysis of breathing pattern, the respiratory rate and, uh, and tidal volume, and according to the breathing pattern and the tidal CO2 signals, uh, modifies the levels of pressure support and uh, conducts uh, spontaneous uh, breathing trials uh, automatically. And when we compare this with the usual care, we observed uh, no, uh, a striking reduction in the duration of uh, mechanical ventilation until the successful uh, extubation. Again, here, uh, this has been uh, observed uh, not only on uh, uh, acute patients, but uh, also in chronic patients. Uh, it's important, uh, this notion of uh, systematically and rigorously screening the patients. These are uh, patients uh, with uh, 
prolonged duration of mechanical ventilation that were already tracheostomized and uh, were sent uh, from the uh, acute care hospital to a long-term uh, care facility to proceed with uh, winning from mechanical ventilation. And actually, uh, the authors here were interested in comparing two techniques, uh, which uh, one uh, was uh, you know, gave uh, you know, a faster uh, withdrawal of uh, mechanical ventilation, whether it was pressure support or uh, you know, uh, unassisted breathing uh, with, uh, with TPs. But uh, the uh, important thing that uh, want, uh, I want to point out here is that uh, among the 500 patients enrolled, you know, uh, about one third, 160, this is 32% of the patients, 160 over 500, these patients that were supposed to have a prolonged winning were successfully disconnected from the machine when they were screened, okay? So again, this uh, emphasizes uh, the importance of uh, this uh, step during the withdrawal of mechanical, uh, uh, during the withdrawal of mechanical uh, ventilation. Well, this is a more recent uh, data just showing uh, what uh, happens uh, in, uh, in, the real, uh, in the real world. It was, this was a multi-center, uh, multinational uh, uh, study. And uh, here essentially what uh, we see is that uh, the vast majority uh, of uh, patients will be uh, successfully uh, extubated uh, at the first uh, separation attempt uh, from uh, the ventilator and uh, about 25% uh, of uh, patients will have a more or less the prolonged uh, wing uh, uh, duration. And uh, here you see uh, which kind of uh, a spontaneous breathing trial or uh, technique of uh, separation attempt was uh, employed. And uh, you see here that in about 90% of the cases, uh, and uh, this is more or less uh, the same for uh, TPs and uh, low levels of uh, pressure support. These were predominantly the two types uh, of uh, techniques uh, that were used uh, during the uh, spontaneous breathing, uh, during the two hours spontaneous breathing trial. And again, here what uh, you see is that uh, as long as uh, the duration of mechanical ventilation goes on after a failed first attempt to withdraw the ventilator, as long as the duration of ventilation uh, goes, uh, goes over, the mortality also increases uh, progressively. So uh, just uh, to uh, summarize, uh, the uh, optimal withdrawal of uh, mechanical uh, ventilation is uh, based on a, on a simple, uh, rigorous, uh, and uh, predefined, uh, predefined uh, strategy. And the systematic screening uh, that uh, has to be conducted uh, early and uh, as soon as possible. So when the likelihood of uh, having uh, a winning success uh, is not high, no, uh, is uh, below uh, 50%, this is, uh, this is essential. And when the test, the, the best test to screen that we have nowadays, that is uh, F over VT, this is uh, below uh, 100, then uh, you have to proceed uh, with uh, a confirmation test, a maximum of a couple uh, of hours of uh, spontaneous breathing uh, before doing uh, the before uh, proceeding with extubation, and with this approach, uh, not the vast majority of uh, your screen patients will be uh, extubated at uh, the first uh, attempt uh, of uh, separation. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.